SNC-Lavalin is dominating the headlines like never before. The engineering and construction giant is at the epicenter of a massive scandal engulfing Ottawa, and a pair of recent profit warnings have, have punished the company's stock. For more on this, we're joined by SNC's CEO, Neil Bruce. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, and you're speaking out for the first time really since this scandal broke. And, and one of the things that Justin Trudeau, in the wake of this, has said is, Conversations with you led him to believe that anything that came out of the deferred prosecution agreement and, and potential criminal charges could affect Canada's economic standing and the number of jobs. Can you talk to us about what you said, what you communicated to the Prime Minister's office about the potential for job losses? So first of all, I've never talked to the Prime Minister about a DPA uh, or about jobs, just to be Clear. You've never talked about jobs? To the Prime Minister. But to the Prime Minister's office? To the Prime Minister's office. I mean, we have, uh, we have lobbied, uh, as you would expect a CEO or you know, the, the company to do. I mean, basically, we're, we're in a place here where it's not just about 9,000 jobs. You know, if you go back to 2012, you know, we had 20,000 Canadian employees. Today, we've got nine. You know, and if we can't put some of this behind us, it's highly likely, you know, that we'll have less. Um, and, I, and I think what people need to, I, and hopefully would, would understand, more, more of the Canadian population would understand is, everything that's being said is talking about things that happened seven to 20 years ago. You know, it didn't happen last month. It didn't happen last year. It's seven to 20 years ago. And we are trying our best you know, to put all of this behind us in an open and transparent way. You've, you've said that before, that this is something that's taken place 20 years ago, and none of those people are at the company anymore. But the issue is what happens today with the company. And I'm going to come back to what did you say about the potential for job losses? Because the uh, in inference is that if you do not get to go the way of deferred prosecution agreement, 9,000 jobs disappear. Well, that's incorrect. And we've never said that. I think if we, if there's no DPA or remediation agreement, and if we eventually get to court, you know, so we're seven years past and we're still not actually in court, um, but we're we're saddled with the burden of something wrong, but actually we've never been to court. But if we are there, and then in two or three years' time, you know, the worst of the worst, and we are found guilty, then that's the point at which we will under the current regime, we will no longer be willing and able to bid on federal contracts. How important are federal contracts to your business right now, though? I understand you only have one federal contract in Canada that ends in June. It doesn't seem like a material part of your overall business. Yeah, but that's not the point here. Isn't it? it? No. Why not? Because the point is that, you know, we firmly believe, first of all, we have apologized on behalf of the company for things that happened 7 to 20 years ago. We believe that the intent of a remediation agreement, like other DPAs, is really, really clear, which is pursue the people responsible and don't damage the innocents. So this is not just about jobs or getting let off something. I mean, we want to prove that the company and the way that the company has acted in an open, transparent manner, cooperated with everyone and all the authorities, you know, we, we believe that we've met the criteria. It is about jobs, though, because that is what Justin Trudeau said by his own admission led him to have people in his office have multiple conversations with the Attorney General. So can you tell us the extent, if it's not 9,000 jobs that disappear, if it is a slow attrition over time, are we looking at a future where SNC only has 1,000 jobs, 2,000 jobs. Did you ever spell out clearly what the economic loss to Canada could be? No, because we put forward in our submissions what the public interest case is. The DPA and the legislation for the remediation agreement is really clear. You cannot justify it on economic alone benefits. It has to be in the public interest. And the other thing that the remediation agreement is really clear about, and it, and it replicates what you've got in the US uh, and the UK and, and other jurisdictions is, 
you need to pursue the people responsible and you need to protect the innocents. And the innocents are employees, shareholders, customers, supply chain, pensioners. And at the moment, the exact opposite is happening. Did you threaten to move your headquarters from Montreal? No. Never? No. So where did this issue come up from, that that was a possibility for SNC? Well, I, I don't know what people make up or what they have in their minds. You know, we are a proud Canadian global champion, one of the few, actually. There's not many. Uh, and we are. We are in the top three ENR design companies in the world. Uh, and, you know, we're proud of being a Canadian company. We've got 130 offices across, you know, Canada. Um, you know, we employ 9,000 people. We used to employ 20,000 people. Uh, we've got a great, um, a very, very strong uh, investor base. You know, 82% of our investors are Canadian. We've got great backers in CDPQ who have been incredibly supportive in, in terms of what we've done. We wouldn't have been able to go and buy probably the best engineering company in the UK, Atkins, without uh, support from CDBQ in terms of the financing. So, I mean, we, we you know, this is where we want to be. In, in terms of our in terms of our base I guess what I'm trying to understand is if you never communicated that there would be massive layoffs and big job losses if you never communicated that your headquarters could potentially leave and if federal contracts today are not a big portion of your business when you look at what the market really cares about for us in C Lavalin it actually has nothing to do with what's going on in Canada it's your issues in Chile and the issues in the Middle East so even if this issue was resolved that doesn't cure the problems that are currently facing SNC-Lavalin. Well, I, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not sure I completely follow that. I mean, the issues in Chile are behind us. Uh, the issues in the Middle East, again, is, you know, it's not of our making uh, in, t in terms of the, uh, you know, the intergovernment uh, relationships there. So, you know, but we, we're a global company. We've got over 50,000 people. I mean, we can... You know, we can dial up, dial down, you know, where, where we work. And, you know, if we're not in a position to be able to do federal contracts, then that's really clear. We don't do that. We do something else. Um, and so from that perspective, you know, we, we're not going to sit and wait for the end of this period to then find that, you know, we're restricted in terms of working in federal contracts. I mean, we'll, we'll go off and we'll find something else to do. So I'm, I'm hearing you say that a lot of uh, fur has been created about this, but SNC is not hanging its hat uh, on the future and the direction of the company on the outcome of, of what happens here with this deferred prosecution agreement. No, no, because the, the other So piece... what has it been like for you watching this narrative uh, in the media and by politicians that suggest exactly that? Well, I think this is, uh, you know, it's an election year. And, and I think I tried to sort of convey the thing, which is, you know, speaking on behalf of our employees, you know, really talented employees, highly qualified, you know, they're appalled. They're appalled by what's going on. And they feel like, you know, I said before, it feels like a nice hockey game between red and blue and our employees are the puck getting scattered around the ice. I mean, it's, it's really unacceptable. But you went in there to play the game, right? When you go in and you have conversations with policymakers, uh, with politicians about what you like to see, you were not passive uh, in this conversation. You were very no, clearly we've, advocating we've, we've for we've a position. A, yeah, but we've got a responsibility to look after the employees, to look after the company. So, the, you know, we, we didn't bring in the second tool in terms of the remediation agreement. You know, that was brought in by the government. Now. The prosecution service, you know, has decided not to use it. Okay, that's fine. We go back to the court, uh, the court route again. You know, we've never asked for charges to be dropped. We've never asked for, you know, this to be circumvented in any way. You know, we'll follow the rule of law, whether it's the court process or a remediation agreement. Now that there's a new attorney general in place, have you had conversations uh, with him about the potential for a deferred prosecution agreement? Is that still a live item for SNC? No. Uh, we've had no uh, dialogue and, and we wouldn't talk as, as a company, as individuals within the company, we would never talk to anyone that was in the prosecution or the justice 
uh, side. We, we do that through our, our representatives and our lawyers, but we wouldn't do that. We, we would lobby you know, through the right channels, open, transparent, recorded. Uh, we would lobby through the government channels, which is the right way for business and government to, to interact. And, and we don't just talk to uh, we don't just talk to the government and the Liberals. I mean, we've talked to all parties. And what has the response been then from, from the Conservative side? Is it different from what you've heard from uh, the federal government? Well, I, I, met, uh, I met the leader uh, of the Conservative government at social events on three occasions, and, you know, he seemed pro-business and seemed supportive. So I'm sort of puzzled uh, by the reaction. The uh, threat that people talk about is the risk of this Canadian company, as you mentioned, of being a takeover target. Have you been approached recently? No. It's always a possibility, uh, but no, no, we haven't. How real is the threat of a foreign company buying SNC Levin? Because it's something we hear a lot about, especially from Quebec-based politicians. Yeah, well, I, I think if, if you're looking at opportunities uh, and you look and see that we are undervalued as a company, so if, if you take, you know, August and the Saudi events, you know, when we disclosed that, our share price went down 10 percent. When we disclosed, quite rightly, that we had been, we were not going to be invited in October, when we were not going to be invited in for a DPA, we went down another 15 percent. So these are things that are not reflective of the business or the work that we do. But I guess the difference there is your shares started to recover after you disclosed that you were not going to be going the DPA route. Meanwhile, if we take a look, we're looking at it. They have not recovered since you disclosed the issues with Chile and the issues with the Middle East. I mean, doesn't that suggest that the market is still very much focused on that and that that might prevent a, a foreign company from wanting to take a look at that because there are multiple headwinds? Yeah, it might do. But I mean, if, if you look at in very sort of simplistic terms, you know, there's 25% of the share price purely because of things that have nothing to do with, really nothing to do with the day-to-day -day business. It doesn't affect our profitability, it doesn't affect our revenues, it doesn't affect our growth or our backlog. Uh, but it is uncertainty. And, and frankly, I, I think it's, you know, I, I just think it's, you know, it, it's just unfortunate and poor uh, that... You know, we, we're actually still trying to resolve things that happened seven to 20 years ago. I mean, we've, we've apologised for the behaviour of the, you know, of, of you know, the, the, previous, the previous management. And ultimately, you know, I firmly believe that, you know, the prosecution service should hold those responsible to account and stop damaging the innocent people. And at the moment, the only people who are being damaged here, apart from the company, is the employees, is the pensioners, is the shareholders. So from that perspective, I, I, I just think you know, justice is upside down here on this. But you've mentioned the criminal code and, and what it specifically says about the remediation agreement uh, several times mm. now. And, and what it says is there are a number of factors that you should look at. Mm -hmm. The degree and the severity of yeah. the charges, I think yeah. you would agree, they're, they're, they're very high. The extent to which senior members participated in that, we know that very So how, how senior, are they being held to account then? They have, but the, what no, I, my no. point but is... How are they being held to account? The point is it does not factor in whether or not they are currently with the organization. That's not in the in the current term. So that's a legal argument that you has, have to make. But within the nine different points mm -hmm. of whether or not you're included uh, or, or should be considered for this remediation mm -hmm. agreement, that's not one of the considerations, whether the people are still there or not. No, but I think if you're going to hold a company to account, you can't put the company in jail. So if you're going to hold a company to account, which is where we are, surely you should be pursuing the people responsible. The Quebec Premier uh, last week said that they were looking at options at potentially buying shares of SNC-Lavalin to prevent the possibility of a foreign takeover. Have you had meaningful discussions about that? Does that involve you at all? No. Not at all. Would that be helpful? I mean, we're a publicly traded company and anybody can buy shares. When you look at the uh, financials within the company, uh, a number of analysts are worried about your leverage, your, your high debt levels, and with some of your end markets, uh, whether you say mining, the issues mm -hmm. are behind it, or, or oil and gas. Uh, how sustainable is that? You, so you've cut, cut the dividend. Mm -hmm. Do you foresee needing to go out and raise capital through the debt markets to no. meet some of your obligations? No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, 
you know, the type of work that we do, you know, especially in Canada in terms of the, the big infrastructure jobs. So if you talk about Eglinton or you talk about, you know, Ottawa LRT or Phase 2 or Trillium that we won last week or the Champlain Bridge or the REM, ultimately, you know, it helps and gives us a competitive advantage if we are investment grade. Now, the investment grade, you're quite right, yeah. has been put under pressure, but part of uh, re readdressing the dividend and a couple of other items that we're doing in terms of making sure that we put far more emphasis on generating free cash flow uh, will we'll help with that and we'll, we'll redress that position. But, I mean, the vast majority of our, you know, of our competitors, you know, a lot of our competitors are not even investment grade in the first place. So, so we want to get back to that because ultimately we are the only Canadian company that is capable and does participate from end to end in these projects. One of the things you disclosed in your management discussion and analysis in December of last year was this sentence where you say that the board has established a committee to consider options that would protect the value for SNC-Lavalin stakeholders uh, regarding the uncertainty of the remediation agreement. What does that mean? What are the options that you're looking at? Would you potentially spin off the parts of the business that are unaffected so that you could hive off the so-called good parts of SNC and insulate the parts that are facing troubles right now? Well, every, every option is open. I mean, you know, but, that, but that's a, you know, for us, that's a strategic competitive thing. So we're not gonna go out and, you know, publicly say, you know, what, what our plans are, but we are looking at every single option because at the moment we believe that due to, you know, the mining issue, which I accept was, uh, you know, that, that was ourselves. Yeah. Uh, but then if you take everything else, um, you know, the company, the company is undervalued. And, and I think everybody, you know, the analysts look at it. And, and ultimately, this uncertainty, you know, just makes it very, very difficult to, you know, surface the true value. One of the ways you're trying to surface that value is through selling a stake of your ownership in the 407 asset. The analysts pegged the total value at about $5 billion. Uh, you've said it's progressing. Do you have a timeline for when you expect that sale to be completed? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's progressing. Due diligence is being done and, uh, you know, everything. With multiple interested parties or has it narrowed well, down? Well, with enough. <laughs> I wish I could quantify that. Uh, is it still about 40% of your stake that you're looking at selling off, or has the recent events made you reevaluate perhaps selling more than 40%? No, no. I mean, the, on, the only way we would alter that is depending on uh, you know the offers that we got from potential buyers. Um, so it's got nothing to do with the investment grade. Taking a step back, as you've watched all these events unfold mm -hmm. since February 7th mm -hmm. and uh, major changes with respect to uh, various positions that are being held in government, mm -hmm. and SNC's name in the paper being used uh, as a political hockey puck, to use your words, mm -hmm. is there anything you want to say to Canadians? Is there anything you wish you could change about how you approach this situation in the first place? Well, I'm not sure what we would do differently in, in terms of representing the company, but the one thing I can tell you is that, you know, our employees, you know, are, you know, they're, 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 they're really saddened by this whole thing because our name, as you say, has been, has been pasted across something which is, it's politics. It's politics. It's not, it's not actually anything to do with us. I mean, we've gone through the right channels. We've been open and transparent. And we've been really clear. We're not looking for charges to be dropped. We're not looking for it to be circumvented. I mean, basically, the government brought in a tool last year, which was an additional tool, to be able to deal with these things. Uh, we would prefer to go down that route because it's a quicker, it's a quicker solution. And, and justice is still there for everybody. This is not a, you, you don't get off. Have, have you, uh, the, th the difference is that you wouldn't then be criminally charged and so you wouldn't be precluded from bidding on federal contracts, uh, given that a lot of your projects in Canada right now are municipal and provincial and thus wouldn't be affected by whatever happens with this uh, criminal case. Have you enter entertained the idea of uh, a plea deal? No. Uh, because actually, in terms of the company itself, I mean, th there's also this this presumption somehow that we are, you know, as a company, that we're guilty. We, we don't fear going to court and defending ourselves 
it's just going to be another three or four years. You know, I, you know, this has been hanging over the company for seven years so far. You know, another three or four years. I mean, that 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 to me is not. You know, it's not justice. I mean, you mentioned the timeline. Is there a chance that the whole thing gets dismissed because it has taken so long? Uh, that would be one legal avenue, perhaps, for you to pursue? Well, it could be, but that would still be frustrating for us. Uh, you know, it'd be better than the position we're in, but it would still be frustrating because we don't believe fundamentally that we're guilty of what we've been charged with. We believe that as a company, we, we cooperated, we disclosed, uh, we've gone through all of the steps uh, in, in order to be able to uh, go through a remediation agreement. Uh, so if it's not available to us, then we'll defend ourselves in court. Neil, thank you so much for coming in and uh, talking about this with us. Thank you very much. It's Neil Bruce, the CEO of SNC Lavalin.